Mamamsa is a Sanskrit word that means reflection or critical investigation, and thus refers to a tradition of Brahmanical thought which reflected on the meanings of certain Vedic texts. This tradition is also known as Purva Mamamsa because of its focus on the earlier Purva Vedic texts dealing with ritual actions, and similarly as Karma Mamamsa due to its focus on ritual action. Karma". It is one of six Vedic affirming Astaka schools of Hinduism. This particular school is known for its philosophical theories on the nature of Dharma, based on hermeneutics of the Vedas, especially the Brahmanas and Samhitas. The Mamamsa school was foundational and influential for the Vedantic schools, which were also known as Uttara Mamamsa for their focus on the later Uttara portions of the Vedas, the Upanishads. While both earlier and Later, Mamamsa investigate the aim of human action, they do so with different attitudes towards the necessity of ritual praxis. Mamamsa has several sub schools, each defined by its epistemology. The Prabhakara sub school, which takes its name from the 7th century philosopher Prabhakara, described the five epistemically reliable means to gaining knowledge pratyaksa or perception, anumana or inference, upamana, by comparison and analogy, arthapati, the use of postulation and derivation from circumstances, and sabda, the word or testimony of past or present reliable experts. The Bhata sub-school, from philosopher Kamarila Bhata, added a sixth means to its canon, Anupalabdi meant non-perception, or proof by the absence of cognition e.g., the lack of gunpowder on a suspect's hand the school of Mamamsa consists of both atheistic and theistic doctrines, but the school showed little interest in systematic examination of the existence of gods. Rather, it held that the soul is an eternal, omnipresent, inherently active spiritual essence, and focused on the epistemology and metaphysics of Dharma. For the Mamamsa school, Dharma meant rituals and social duties, not devas, or gods, because gods existed only in name. The Mamamsakas also held that Vedas are eternal, authorless, and infallible. That Vedic vidhi, or injunctions and mantras in rituals are prescriptive karya or actions, and the rituals are of primary importance and merit. They considered the Upanishads and other texts related to self-knowledge and spirituality as subsidiary, a philosophical view that Vedanta disagreed with. Mamamsa gave rise to the study of philology and the philosophy of language. While their deep analysis of language and linguistics influenced other schools of Hinduism, their views were not shared by others. Mamamsakas considered the purpose and power of language was to clearly prescribe the proper, correct and right. In contrast, Vedantins extended the scope and value of language as a tool to also describe, develop and derive. Mamamsakas considered orderly, law-driven, procedural life as central purpose and noblest necessity of dharma and society, and divine theistic sustenance means to that end. The Mamamsa school is a form of philosophical realism. A key text of the Mamamsa school is the Mamamsa Sutra of Jaimini. Terminology Mamamsa, also romanized Mamansa or Mamamsa, means, "...reflection, consideration, profound thought, investigation, examination, discussion." In Sanskrit. It also refers to the "...examination of the Vedic text." and to a school of Hindu philosophy that is also known as Purva Mamamsa prior inquiry, also Karma Mamamsa, in contrast to Uttara Mamamsa posterior inquiry, also Jayanana Mamamsa the opposing school of Vedanta. 
This division is based on classification of the Vedic texts into Karmakanda, the early sections of the Veda treating of mantras and rituals Samhitas and, Brahmanas, and the Junanakanda dealing with the meditation, reflection and knowledge of self, oneness, Brahman the Upanishads. Between the Samhitas and Brahmanas, the Mamamsa school places greater emphasis to the Brahmanas, the part of Vedas that is a commentary on Vedic rituals. Donald Davis translates Mamamsa as the desire to think, and in colloquial historical context as how to think and interpret things. In the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, the word Mamamsa began to denote the thoughts on and interpretation of the Vedas, first as Purva Mamamsa for rituals portions in the earlier layers of texts in the Vedas, and as Uttara Mamamsa for the philosophical portions in the last layers. Over time, Purva Mamamsa was just known as the Mamamsa school, and the Uttara Mamamsa as the Vedanta school. Mamamsa scholars are referred to as Mamamsakas. <laughs> Dasana philosophy central concerns Mamamsa is one of the six classical Hindu dasanas. It is among the earliest schools of Hindu philosophies. It has attracted relatively less scholarly study, although its theories and particularly its questions on exegesis and theology have been highly influential on all classical Indian philosophies. Its analysis of language has been of central importance to the legal literature of India. Ancient Mamansa's central concern was epistemology, pramana, that is, what are the reliable means to knowledge. It debated not only, how does man ever learn or know, whatever he knows, but also whether the nature of all knowledge is inherently circular, whether those such as foundationalists who critique the validity of any justified beliefs", and knowledge system make flawed presumptions of the very premises they critique, and how to correctly interpret and avoid incorrectly interpreting Dharma texts such as the Vedas. It asked questions such as, "'What is Devata' God? A rituals dedicated to Devata's efficacious? What makes anything efficacious? And can it be proved that the Vedas, or any canonical text in any system of thought, fallible or infallible Sveta Pramania, intrinsically valid, if so, how?" and others. To Mamansa scholars, the nature of non-empirical knowledge and human means to it are such that one can never demonstrate certainty, one can only falsify knowledge claims, in some cases. According to Francis Clooney, a professor at Harvard Divinity School specializing on Hinduism, the Mamansa school is, "...one of the most distinctively Hindu forms of thinking, it is without real parallel elsewhere in the world." The central text of the Mamansa school is Jamini's Mamansa Sutras, along with the historically influential commentaries on this sutra by Sabara and by Kamari Labata. Together, these texts develop and apply the rules of language analysis such as the rules of contradiction, asserting that one must not only examine injunctive propositions in any scripture, but also examine the alternate related or reverse propositions for better understanding. They suggested that to reach correct and valid knowledge it is not only sufficient to demand proof of a proposition, it is important to give proof of a proposition's negative as well as declare and prove one's own preferred propositions. Further, they asserted that whenever perception is not the means of direct proof and knowledge, one cannot prove such non-empirical propositions to be true or not true. Rather one can only prove a non-empirical proposition is «false, not false, or uncertain». For example, Mamansakas welcome not only the demand for proof of an injunctive proposition such as «Agnahort ritual leads one to heaven», 
but suggest that one must examine and prove alternate propositions such as, "...ritual does not lead one to heaven. Something else leads one to heaven. There is heaven. There is no heaven." and so on. Mamansa literature states that if satisfactory, verifiable proof for all of such propositions cannot be found by its proponents and its opponents, then the proposition needs to be accepted as a part of a belief system. Beliefs, such as those in the scriptures Vedas, must be accepted to be true unless its opponents can demonstrate the proof of validity of their own texts or teachers these opponents presume to be prima facie justified, and until these opponents can demonstrate that the scriptures they challenge are false. If they do not try to do so, it is hypocrisy, if they try to do so, it can only lead to infinite regress, according to Mamansakas. Any historic scripture with widespread social acceptance, according to Mamansaka, is an activity of communication and is accepted as authoritative because it is socially validated practice, unless perceptually verifiable evidence emerges that proves parts or all of it as false or harmful. Mamansakas were predominantly concerned with the central motivation of human beings, the highest good, and actions that make this possible. Possible. They stated that human beings seek naratasaya priti unending ecstatic pleasure, joy, happiness in this life and the next. They argued that this highest good is the result of one's own ethical actions dharma, that such actions are what the Vedic sentences contain and communicate, and therefore it important to properly interpret and understand Vedic sentences, words and meaning. Mamansa scholarship was centrally concerned with the philosophy of language, how human beings learn and communicate with each other and across generations with language in order to act in a manner that enables them to achieve that which motivates them. The Mamansa school focused on dharma, deriving ethics and activity from the karma kanda rituals part of the Vedas, with the argument that ethics for this life and efficacious action for svarga heaven cannot be derived from sense perception, and can only be derived from experience, reflection and understanding of past teachings. Sabara, 2nd century Mamansa scholar, According to Daniel Arnold, Mamansa scholarship has striking affinities with that of William Alston, the 20th century Western philosopher, along with some notable differences. The Mamansakas subjected to a radical critique, more than 2,000 years ago, states Francis Clooney, the notions such as God, the sacred text, the author and the anthropocentric ordering of reality topic <inaudible> epistemology in the field of epistemology later mamamsakas made some notable contributions Unlike the Nyaya or the Vaisheshika systems, the Prabhakara sub-school of Mamamsa recognizes five means of valid knowledge SKT, pramana. The Bhata sub-school of Mamamsa recognizes one additional sixth, namely Anuapalabdi, just like Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism. These six epistemically reliable means of gaining knowledge are Topic. Pratyaksa Main article, Pratyaksha Pratyaksa Pratyaksya means perception. It is of two types in Mamansa and other schools of Hinduism, external and internal. External perception is described as that arising from the interaction of five senses and worldly objects, while internal perception is described by this school as that of inner sense, the mind. 
The ancient and medieval Indian texts identify four requirements for correct perception: Indriyathasanakasa, direct experience by one's sensory organs with the object, whatever is being studied; Avyapadasya, non-verbal, correct perception is not through hearsay. According to ancient Indian scholars, where one's sensory organ relies on accepting or rejecting someone else's perception, Avyavakara does not wander. Correct perception perception does not change, nor is it the result of deception because one's sensory organ or means of observation is drifting, defective, suspect and vyavasayatmaka definite, correct perception excludes judgments of doubt, either because of one's failure to observe all the details, or because one is mixing inference with observation and observing what one wants to observe, or not observing what one does not want to observe. Some ancient scholars proposed unusual perception as pramana and called it internal perception, a proposal contested by other Indian scholars. The internal perception concepts included pratava intuition, samenyalaksanapratyaksa, a form of induction from perceived specifics to a universal, and junyanalaksanapratyaksa, a form of perception of prior processes and previous states of a topic of study by observing its current state. Further, some schools of Hinduism considered and refined rules of accepting uncertain knowledge from pratyaksa pramana, so as to contrast nirnaya definite judgment, conclusion from anadyavasaya indefinite judgment. Topic <laughs> Anumana. Main article Anumana. Anumana, anumana means inference. It is described as reaching a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths by applying reason. Observing smoke and inferring fire is an example of anumana. In all except one Hindu philosophies, this is a valid and useful means to knowledge. The method of inference is explained by Indian texts as consisting of three parts: pratijna (hypothesis), hetu (a reason), and doktashtanta (examples). The hypothesis must further be broken down into two parts: state the ancient Indian scholars, sadhya (that idea which needs to proven or disproven), and paksha (the object on which the sadhya is predicated). The inference is conditionally true if sapaksha positive examples as evidence are present and if vipaksha negative examples as counter evidence are absent. For rigor, the Indian philosophies also state further epistemic steps. For example, they demand vyapti, the requirement that the hetu reason must necessarily and separately account for the inference in all cases, in both sapaksha and vipaksha. A conditionally proven hypothesis is called a nigamana conclusion. <laughs> Upamana Main article, Upamana Upamana means comparison and analogy. Some Hindu schools consider it as a proper means of knowledge. Upamana, states Lochtfeld, may be explained with the example of a traveler who has never visited lands or islands with endemic population of wildlife. He or she is told, by someone who has been there, that in those lands you see an animal that sort of looks like a cow, grazes like cow but is different from a cow in such and such way. Such use of analogy and comparison is, state the Indian epistemologists, a valid means of conditional knowledge, as it helps the traveller identify the new animal later. The subject of comparison is formally called upamayam, the object of comparison is called upamanam, while the attributes are identified as samanya. Thus, explains Manir Manir Williams, if a boy says, her face is like the moon in charmingness. Her face is upamayam, the moon is upamanam, and charmingness is samanya. 
The 7th century text Bharti Kavaya in verses 10.28 through 10.63 discusses many types of comparisons and analogies, identifying when this epistemic method is more useful and reliable, and when it is not. In various ancient and medieval texts of Hinduism, 32 types of Upanama and their value in epistemology are debated. Arthapati Arthapati means postulation, derivation from circumstances. In contemporary logic, this pramana is similar to circumstantial implication. As example, if a person left in a boat on river earlier, and the time is now past the expected time of arrival, then the circumstances support the truth postulate that the person has arrived. Many Indian scholars considered this pramana as invalid or at best weak, because the boat may have gotten delayed or diverted. However, in cases such as deriving the time of a future sunrise or sunset, this method was asserted by the proponents to be reliable. Another common example for arthapati found in the texts of Mamamsa and other schools of Hinduism is, that if, "...devadatta is fat", and "...devadatta does not eat in day", then the following must be true, "...devadatta eats in the night". This form of postulation and deriving from circumstances is, claim the Indian scholars, a means to discovery, proper insight and knowledge. The Hindu schools that accept this means of knowledge state that this method is a valid means to conditional knowledge and truths about a subject and object in original premises or different premises. The schools that do not accept this method, state that postulation, extrapolation and circumstantial implication is either derivable from other pramanas or flawed means to correct knowledge, instead one must rely on direct perception or proper inference. Anupalabdi <inaudible> <inaudible> Main article, Anupalabdi, see also, above Anupalabdi, Anupalabdi accepted only by Kamari Labhata sub-school of Mamamsa, means non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. Anupalabdi Pramana suggests that knowing a negative, such as, there is no jug in this room, is a form of valid knowledge. If something can be observed or inferred or proven as non-existent or impossible, then one knows more than what one did without such means. In the two schools of Hinduism that consider Anupalabdi as epistemically valuable, a valid conclusion is either sadrupa positive or asadrupa negative relation, both correct and valuable. Like other pramana, Indian scholars refined Anupalabdi to four types, non-perception of the cause, non-perception of the effect, non-perception of object, and non-perception of contradiction. Only two schools of Hinduism accepted and developed the concept, non-perception, as a pramana. The schools that endorsed Anupalabdi affirmed that it is valid and useful when the other five pramanas fail in one's pursuit of knowledge and truth. Abhava, Abhava means non existence. Some scholars consider Anupalabdi to be same as Abhava, while others consider Anupalabdi and Abhava as different. Abhava pramana has been discussed in ancient Hindu texts in the context of padartha, padartha referent of a term. A padartha is defined as that which is simultaneously a stitva existent, jnyatva knowable, and a bhyatva nameable. Specific examples of padartha, states Bartley, include dravya substance, guna quality, karma activity, motion, samanya jati universal class property, samavaya inherence, and vishesha individuality. Abhava is then explained as reference of negative expression, in contrast to 
reference of positive expression in Padartha. An absence, state the ancient scholars, is also existent, knowable, and nameable. Giving the example of negative numbers, silence is a form of testimony, a Satkaryavada theory of causation, and analysis of deficit as real and valuable. Abhava was further refined in four types, by the schools of Hinduism that accepted it as a useful method of epistemology, dhvamsa termination of what existed, atyanta abhava impossibility, absolute non-existence, contradiction, anyanya abhava mutual negation, reciprocal absence and pragavasa prior, antecedent non-existence. Sabda 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 means relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. Haryana explains Sabda Pramana as a concept which means reliable expert testimony. The schools of Hinduism which consider it epistemically valid suggest that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. He must rely on others, his parent, family, friends, teachers, ancestors and kindred members of society to rapidly acquire and share knowledge and thereby enrich each other's lives. This means of gaining proper knowledge is either spoken or written, but through sabda words. The reliability of the source is important, and legitimate knowledge can only come from the sabda of reliable sources. The disagreement between the schools of Hinduism has been on how to establish reliability. Some schools, such as Kāvāka, state that this is never possible, and therefore sabda is not a proper pramāna. Other schools debate means to establish reliability. <laughs> <laughs> Relation to Vedanta school An interesting feature of the Mamamsa school of philosophy is its unique epistemological theory of the intrinsic validity of all cognition as such. It is held that all knowledge is ipso facto true Thus, what is to be proven is not the truth of a cognition, but its falsity. The Mamamsakas advocate the self-validity of knowledge both in respect of its origin and ascertainment Not only did the Mamamsakas make the very great use of this theory to establish the unchallengeable validity of the Vedas, but later Vedantists also drew freely upon this particular Mamamsa contribution. Metaphysics and beliefs The core tenets of Purva Mamamsa are ritualism anti-asceticism and anti-mysticism. The central aim of the school is elucidation of the nature of Dharma, understood as a set ritual obligations and prerogatives to be performed properly. Atheism Mamamsa theorists decided that the evidence allegedly proving the existence of God was insufficient. They argue that there was no need to postulate a maker for the world, just as there was no need for an author to compose the Vedas or a god to validate the rituals. Mamamsa argues that the gods named in the Vedas have no existence apart from the mantras that speak their names. To that regard, the power of the mantras is what is seen as the power of gods. <laughs> Dharma Dharma as understood by Purva Mamamsa can be loosely translated into English as virtue, morality, or duty. 
The Purva Mamamsa school traces the source of the knowledge of Dharma neither to sense experience nor inference, but to verbal cognition i.e. knowledge of words and meanings according to Vedas. In this respect it is related to the Nyaya school the latter, however, accepts only four sources of knowledge pramana as valid. The Purva Mamamsa school held Dharma to be equivalent to following the prescriptions of the Samhitas and their Brahmana commentaries relating the correct performance of Vedic rituals. Seen in this light, Purva Mamamsa is essentially ritualist orthopraxy, placing great weight on the performance of karma or action as enjoined by the Vedas. <laughs> Relation to Vedanta Emphasis of Yajnik Karmakandas in Purva Mamamsa is erroneously interpreted by some to be an opposition to Junanakanda of Vedanta and Upanishads. Purva Mamamsa does not discuss topics related to Junanakanda, such as salvation moksa, but it never speaks against moksa. Vedanta quotes Jaimini's belief in Brahman as well as in moksa. In Uttarama Mamsa or Vedanta 4.4.5-7, Badarayana cites Jaimini as saying, The Mukta Purusa is united with the Brahman as if it were like the Brahman, because descriptions in Sruti etc. prove so. In Vedanta 1.2.28, Badarayana cites Jaimini as saying that there is no contradiction in taking Vaishvanara as the supreme Brahman. In 1.2.31, Jaimini is again quoted by Badarayana as saying that the Nirguna attribute less Brahman can manifest itself as having a form. In 4.3.12, Badarayana again cites Jaimini as saying that the Mukta Purusha attains Brahman. In Purva Mamamsa too, Jaimini emphasizes the importance of faith in and attachment to the omnipotent supreme being whom Jaimini calls the omnipotent Pradhana, the main Purva Mamamsa 6.3.1, Sarvasaktau Pravti Syat Tathavutopadisat, Sarvasaktau Pravti Syat Tathavutopadisat. The term Upadesa here means instructions of the Sastras as taught. We should tend towards the omnipotent Supreme Being. In the context of Purva Mamamsa 6.3.1 shown above, next two sutras become significant, in which this omnipotent being is termed as Pradhana, and keeping away from him is said to be a dosa. Hence all beings are asked to get related. Abhisambandhat. In Tadakarmani ca doses tasmat tato visasa syat pradhanan avasambandhat, Jaimini 6, 3.3 to the omnipotent main being. API VP Ekadese Syat Pradhain Hai Arthaniv Tir Gunamatra Mitarat Tadarthatvat, Jaimini 6, 3.2, Karma Mamamsa supports the Vedas, and RG Veda says that one truth is variously named by the sages. It is irrelevant whether we call him as Pradhana or Brahman or Vaishvanara or Shiva or God. History The school's origins lie in the scholarly traditions of the final centuries BCE, when the priestly ritualism of Vedic sacrifice was being marginalized by Buddhism and Vedanta. To counteract this challenge, several groups emerged dedicated to demonstrating the validity of the Vedic texts by rigid formulation of rules for their interpretation. 
The school gathers momentum in the Gupta period with Sabara, and reaches its apex in the 7th to 8th centuries with Kamari Labata and Prabhakara. The school for some time in the early Middle Ages exerted near dominant influence on learned Hindu thought, and is credited as a major force contributing to the decline of Buddhism in India, but it has fallen into decline in the High Middle Ages and today is all but eclipsed by Vedanta. Topic: Mimamsa texts. The foundational text for the Mimamsa school is the Purva Mimamsa Sutras of Jaimini, ca. 5th to 4th century BCE. A major commentary was composed by Sabara in ca. the 5th or 6th century CE. The school reaches its height with Kamari Labata and Prabhakara Florida, CA. 700 CE. Both Kamari Labata and Prabhakara along with Marari, whose work is no more extant have written extensive commentaries on Sabara's Mamamsasutrabhasyam. Kamari Labata, Mandana Misra, Parthasarathi Misra, Sukharita Misra, Ramakrishna Bhata, Madhava Subhordini, Sankara Bhata, Kasnayajvan, Anantadeva, Gaga Bhata, Raghavendra Titha, Vijayendra Titha, Apaya Dikshita, Paruthiyur Krishna Sastri, Mahamahapadhyaya Sri Ramsubha Sastri, Sri Venkatsubha Sastri, Sri A. Chinnaswami Sastri, Sengolipuram Vidyanatha Dikshita were some of Mamansa scholars. The Mamamsa Sutra of Jaimini c. 3rd century BCE has summed up the general rules of Nyaya for Vedic interpretation. The text has twelve chapters, of which the first chapter is of philosophical value. The commentaries on the Mamamsa Sutra by Bhatramitra, Bhavadasa, Hari and Upavasa are no more extant. Sabara c. 1st century BCE is the first commentator of the Mamamsa Sutra, whose work is available to us. His Basya is the basis of all later works of Mamamsa. Kamari Labata 7th century CE, the founder of the first school of the Mamamsa commented on both the Sutra and its Sabara Basya. His treatise consists of three parts, the Slokavatika, the Tantravatika and the Tuptika. Mandana Misra 8th century CE was a follower of Kamarila, who wrote Vidivivika and Mamamsanukramani. There are several commentaries on the works of Kamarila. Sukharita Misra wrote a Kasika commentary on the Slokavatika. Sumsvara Bhata wrote Nyayasuda, also known as Ranaka, a commentary on the Tantravatika. Parthasarathi Misra wrote Nyayaratnakara another commentary on the Slokavatika. He also wrote Sastradipika, an independent work on the Mamamsa and Tantraratna. Venkata Dixita's Vatakabharanya is a commentary on the Tuptika. Prabhakara 8th century CE, the originator of the second school of the Mamamsa wrote his commentary Brahati on the Sabara Basya, Salakarnathas Arjuvamala 9th century CE is a commentary on the Brahati. His Prakarana Pansika is an independent work of this school and the Parasista is a brief explanation of the Sabara Basya. The Vanathas Nyayavivika deals with the views of this school in details. The founder of the third school of the Mamamsa was Marari, whose works have not reached us. Apadeva wrote an elementary work on the Mamamsa, known as Mamamsanyaprakasa or Apadevi. Arthasamgraha of Laugixi Bhaskara is based on the Apadevi. Vedanta Desika's Sesvara Mamamsa was an attempt to combine the views of the Mamamsa and the Vedanta schools. <laughs> See also